So our fifth race of the day is going to be the Juvenile Handicap Hurdle. It's a 0-110 for the four-year-olds. So f up first in our top weight is going to be Regal Mount, who's also our 9-4 to four favourite. Craig Beckwith's Royal Pawn. Alex Cherry's Imaginary Symbol. Stu Gray's Landmind. Yes, Bo de Clermont for Pedro Hogan, along with the Fisher King, just makes up six. I can't believe that Regal Mount's got in a 110 handicap hurdle when it's been running in grade one juvenile races and it's still got a mark of less than 110. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, they're already racing here and they're going to come to the first of the eight hurdles. And it's an imaginary symbol that leads from Regal Mount in second, although taking a keen hold. Yasbo de Clermont. Royal Pawn and the Fisher King, and just at the rear is Landmine, but they're all taking a keen hold here, although this Regal Mount, which is really a, a grade one horse, should certainly probably have a higher rate in the 110. Didn't he come fourth in at the festival? Anyway, it's Regal Mount that leads us this grey by three or four to imaginary symbol and the Royal Pawn. And then the Fisher King between horses. He has blow de Clermont and Lamb. I know he was a little bit slow over that, that Regal Mount. But certainly the class horse in the race. Leads by a couple. The Royal Pawn in second now. Imaginary symbol taking a keen hold. The Fisher King between horses. Lamb just up on the outside of it. He has blow de Clermont. As they come to the third. The leader gets over it well. All clear it. A couple pecking. Lamb mine and Yesbo de Clermont. Just a little bit. But it's still Regal Mount. Leads by three to imaginary symbol and royal pawn. And a length or so back to the Fisher King and Yesbo de Clermont. And the landmine. Great regal mount. Leads them down to the next. Takes a hold again. Gets over the fourth. And we'll clear it. Royal pawn is in second now. We've lost sight of the rest. So it's regal mount and royal pawn. There we go, imaginary symbol and landmine coming to the picture. The two we can't see are Patrick Hogan's horse. This is Yabo de Clermont. Oh, yes, Beau de Clermont. And it's a few short king. E -on, e -on, e -on. I call my horses French names because I lack the French people and the garlic and the onions and the other things. They get to the fifth. They all clear that. Oh, the, yes, Beau de Clermont and the Fisher King are a little bit disconnected. But this regal mount class horse in the race proving it here as we come inside the six furlongs we've got a couple of flights to take takes another hold this regal mount from royal pawn trying to close the gap the imaginary symbol off the bridle now as well as lamb line up on the wide outside the fisher king and yesbo de clermont have got a bit caught for toe but we've still got just under five furlongs to run and it's this regal mount from imaginary symbol land mine and royal prawn or pawn, should I say? It's not a prawn, sorry. But it's Regal Mount that's still got the lead. Here comes Landmine up on the wide outside, an imaginary symbol, and then Royal Pawn, the Fisher King, and Yesbo de Clermont are trying to pick up. But as we come down to the last, sorry, the penultimate, and it's Regal Mount that still leads from Landmine. Royal Pawn now in third. Imaginary symbol doesn't look like he's got a lot left, but this Regal Mount coming down to the last. Still leads by a good couple of lengths to Landmine, Royal Pawn. Imaginary symbol. He has Blow de Clermont and the Fisher King. He's pulling away further, this Regal Mount now. Coming down to the last furlong left to run. Landmine and Royal Pawn have got a bit to do. He's over at the leader. Landmine and Royal Pawn have got to make up three lengths, but I can't see him catching this class horse. Regal Mount should be well over 110 rated, but there's a good win there for Martin Windsor Juvenile Handicap Hurdle with Regal Mount. A great one horse. And they walked 110. Incredible. An easy win there. Royal Pawn got up for second. Landmine for Stu Gray was third. Fourth was imaginary symbol for Alex Cherry and Yesbo de Clermont was fifth.